you. much for honoring our invitation. You're welcome. Thanks for inviting me. Now, you're an actor, a producer, a casting director. Yes. <laughs> and a drama instructor. Yes. How have you been able to evolve through all these roles in the industry? Um, first of all, um, I don't know that there was a plan or like a map. Okay. But knowing that, you know, when you feel like I'm going to explore everything that is on my inside and I would push to do those things to the best of my abilities. I think that's my story. So I started off as an actor and then I worked in a lot of departments when I started off. And then I realized I liked putting things together and making things happen. And then Jackie Silva asked me one day to come and teach on her faculty. And then I realized that um, I come across a lot of talent. I'm able to look at a script and be like, oh, this person will work here, this person will work here. So I'm like, let's make this thing into you know, money. And I became a casting director. So. Yeah, it's, so it's just like so many times, like today I'm coming from an audition, somebody goes like, so are you auditioning or are you casting? What are you? I'm like, no, I'm here as an actor, I'm auditioning. You know, so for me, it also makes my, my career very interesting because the work is seasonal. The work as a performer is seasonal. So when I'm not acting, I'm producing something. When I'm not producing something, I'm casting for somebody. And somehow I'm involved in all parts of the industry. You recently won the Trailblazer Award. Yes. Africa's biggest. Uh, movie awards show, the AMBCA. Mm -hmm. How do you think this will affect your career? Hmm. Um, since I'm living it <laughs> now, <laughs> I think I can, I can give you a bit of real, you know, example. Okay. So, I mean, first off, it was like an announcement to Africa. Like, hi, the lie is over here. Notice her, everybody. So, I have been put on blast. That's the first thing. And you know, even though I've been working for 11 years, for some people it was their first time hearing my name, yeah. seeing my face. Yeah. And so they're like, who's this person? So you find out people are researching or Googling that if they give this girl trailblazer, <laughs> what is it about her? Who are you? You know, who, you know? And then I'm getting messages from all over the world. Wow. People are telling me. So some people I know from South Africa, from Kenya, from Ghana, they're like, I didn't even know this was what you did. <laughs> I watched the show live. Imagine my shock seeing you. So first it put me on blast. Then I don't think I have done the number of interviews between when I won and now in my whole career. I've done granted so many interviews, photo shoots, press, and so that has so the award puts me out there, you know, to more people, which is great because then the brand can grow. Then there's more the, the brand has more equity, and then we can we can represent people and all of that. On the work scene, there's two ways to it. So you're an award-winning, trailblazing actor. You bring value to a production. People want to work with you. You know, they're like, oh, in my film, I have this person, I have that person. But on the flip side, there's also like, oh, she's now a big girl. She has blown. She's stuck up. You know, I wouldn't even call her. I'm not even going to call her because I can't afford her. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she's going to tell me this price or that. So there's that. So I have to consciously remind people that I'm still the same girl. I'm still the same person. The award is great, but it's not money. <laughs> I need to keep working hard. And you know, when you win an award like that, there's pressure. There's all kinds of pressure. And it's not a good time to relax. It's not a good time to, to, to think I've arrived. So I have to do more because more eyes are on me. Mm -hmm. And so by next year, when somebody else is winning the Trailblazer, my career is going to be criticized. It's going to be scrutinized. And be like between when she won and now, what has happened? Mm -hmm. So we gotta keep working, girl. Now I, li I liked the inclusion of your previous directors and mentors. In yes. Certain speech. Yes. Uh, it's interesting how you started in the industry not knowing anybody, but now you know everything. <laughs> how did you do it? Uh, I'm a hustler. <laughs> I'm a hustler. Like, don't even get it twisted. I'm a hustler. I don't quit. I don't stop. I don't take no's. If I want something, I will get it. Except the Lord says no, and. My, my idea of the Lord saying no is I have done my best. Mm -hmm. I have done every mm -hmm. single thing and I still don't get it. Then I'll be like, Lala, it's probably not for you. So um, my 11th commandment is know thyself is not a cause. And so knowing who I was and what I wanted was very instrumental to getting to know everybody. So I would write down everything. I want to work with this person. I want to do this. I want to do that. And so I think the the... The borderline was having to decide what I wanted to do. Okay. When I decided that I wanted to be an actor, I was like, okay, how are we going to become? What kind of actor do we want to become? So when I, so I, just, I, knew, I, found, I wrote down the kind of actor I wanted to become, then the how. 
like, okay, I want to go through theater because deciding how I wanted to, the kind of actor I wanted to be and the kinds of actors I wanted to be like said um, I had to, you know, have a good foundation in theater because all of them are great on stage. So it was deliberate. So who are the great directors on stage? Who are the people doing relevant things on stage right now? I had my list. And I went for all the auditions. You are looking for them. Hello, hi, you know. And I met Wale Ogutoku in 2007. Um, that was my final year in university. And he was doing a season of Wale Shoinka. And I attended the audition. It was a Sunday morning. I remember that day clearly. <laughs> you know, I wore a dress. I thought I was just going to audition and go to church. So I auditioned and he liked me. And then he cast me in what really told the world that I was here to stay. I played Amokwe in Trials of Brother Jero. And I worked with him for two years plus. And... And so it was, you know, step by step, step by step. So, you know, you get to a certain level. My, so at, the, at that time, it was the right people will see me. I want this person to see me and just know, because I also don't believe in asking for favors. Mm -hmm. I believe mm -hmm. in getting there on, you know, just with the work. So even when people start talking to me about things like PR, I'm like, we can't do PR for PR's sake. It has mm -hmm. to be on the shoulders of the work. We have to do the work. So I will push, let this person see me, let that person see me. Then you introduce me to this person now. What's wrong with you? I said, you can't be quiet. I don't know about great people that keep quiet. I'm not talking, <laughs> you see, I'm not, I'm not necessarily talking about personalities. Okay. So I'm not saying introverts or extroverts. But in your, in your uniqueness, you will speak about the things you want. You will use networks. So if you know somebody that knows somebody, introduce me. Just, when you introduce me, don't worry, I'll be okay. I have what it takes. So that's, I think that's what has helped me. Then there are people, I have found their addresses and their phone numbers. And I've gone to their offices. So wait, now, you go to the office and you say what? Classic example, Tunde Kelani. Okay. I went to his office. I, I, I found the address. But before I went, I had been acting for a while. Okay. I went to his office in 2000. And so you had something to work. Yes, I went to in 2010. At the time, I was deciding to do my master's at the Pan-Atlantic University in media and communication. My choice, I mean, I couldn't afford to go abroad. But I was like, okay, this school, I'll go to this school because it also had... The, the pedigree was good. And I'm like, if I walked into a room of influencers in media and I say that I'm a graduate of this school, I'm a student of this school, they would pay attention mm -hmm. to me. My name will not be enough. Mm -hmm. So and he had been doing some lectures with the school. So I kind of booked an appointment. I'm a master's student of media and communication. Right. From this, I'd like right. to see you, sir. And I'm a scholar. And he's also somebody who is always ready to teach and things. So that day... Good afternoon, sir. This is me. This is what I'm studying. This is what I've been doing. And I want to act. This is what I want to become. And I want to work with you. And he found it really funny. Of course. He found it really funny. But he didn't, he didn't push me away. He, didn't, he was shooting Mami at the time. And then he said, ah, we are shooting already. I don't have any roles for you. Do you want to learn how to use the camera? I said, no. He said, do you want to learn cinematography? I said, no. I said, I want to be in front of the camera. He said, ah. I don't have anything right now. I said, okay. And that's the thing. You have to also respect people, especially when they're being honest. And he said, okay, no problem. And I said, thank you. But I wasn't done with him, you know. Mm -hmm. So I took his number, but he told me I could call him anytime. I could ask questions. And then I met him at another film festival. I made sure to check introduce me to him. You know, just, yeah. So he's, hello. Hi. Well, this what is do what you I think need. it was about you that, made him respect you enough to have that conversation i mean first of all i was studying i was doing a second degree i was a master's People student yes <laughs> so you know when people say some things and you know artists in particular and I, I can only speak about artists in nigeria because that's the community i'm familiar with you know sometimes this same um, you know we are we are artists let's be rough arts arts let's express is rubbish sometimes comport yourself package yourself when you step into a room with a banker, don't let them look at the banker and look at you and be like, ah, those artists, that's how they are. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So I called him, and it was a very professional phone call. So I'm, 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 stu I'm studying for my second degree. Surely, I'm not a riffraff. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not dumb. I can have a conversation. So those things are ticked. Then, okay, I'm in this school. Okay. Ah, studying media and communication as a second degree. Okay, come. So I think those things already helped. And then when I met him, I guess the rest was my, my personality and all of that. But I'm saying some people don't even get to the point where they get to the same room yes. with these people. But you have to do things. Everything I do is strategic. 
like somebody will say, why do you take this role? I'm like, because I want to be in this cast list and work with this person. So after we've worked together, I may have done something small, but I'm in that person's network and I'm in that circle and I'll be associated with them and then we can build greatness from there and there's no hurry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, some of the mentors you mentioned in your acceptance speech were yeah. Jimmy Okoye and Dunawo, Viola yes. Alabi, yeah. Joke Silva. Yeah. I mean, these women are achievers. Yeah. So how do you develop such close-knit relationships with, with such them? achievers? See, eh, I tell people, even in relationships, after God, my work is next. I, in between my work, I don't know how my mom is going to feel hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> I called work. People family, I love you, mommy. <laughs> but um, this work, because for me, it's beyond just his purpose. is like what I'm on earth for. So I take it very seriously. So I take everything I do as seriously as my work. So when I tell people that I'm taking this as seriously as my work, I'm letting them understand. So if I am going to sweep the floor, it's going to be with that level of seriousness. Otherwise, I won't do it at all. I'm an all or nothing person. So this mentorship thing is yes. like work. Okay. It's not relationship with the women. <laughs> oh gosh, let's roll with the no. It is as serious as my work. And there was a plan for it. Mm -hmm. I believe that one of the key things to greatness is mentorship. Having people who have gone before you practically hold your hand is very key to becoming great and even greater than them. And I looked around me and I found, I'm like, where are the mentors? Or what are the, what are the structures for mentorship in our society? Now, by, by fluke, Auntie Jokesova became, she's, she's my mother, really. She's mentor, mother, gist partner, everything. So I already had her in 2009 and I pushed my way into her. So that when I was doing my master's, my exam, I had to direct a documentary okay. on an important person. Of course, I chose her. Because I wanted to be close to her. Mm -hmm. So I just got somebody to introduce me to her as, oh, this is my friend. She's an actor. She's also studying for her master's. Once I knew, I knew I was going to make that film. And she had to be my subject. Now, we are making a film on somebody. You will talk to them. Mm -hmm. You will fall, go to their mm -hmm. house. You will take their pictures. That's how I entered her. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. I made that film. I got a bill in that course. I didn't do it because I had to direct it. That's when I knew I can't be. I don't know about directing. Okay. It was hard. Okay. You know? And we bonded, and it was from there she asked me to come and be on her faculty because she was like, ah, you have a master's, you're this, you're acting, come and teach, Jo. You know, so I already had her as a mentor. Funke Bokno Bruti had been from university. Okay. She was my pastor okay. in fellowship, okay. and we just clicked. And, you know, because even as a Christian in church, I, I'd say I'm a Christian in the marketplace, and I'm not churchos mm -hmm. in, the, in the, you know, you. yeah. You. And so... Bucky, that's what I call her. Bucky is also not churches. But, you know, people don't know that Forget Bucky Nobrita is an ordained deaconess in the Redeemed Christian Church of God. And, <laughs> yes, ordained by Daddy Gio. <laughs> I've put her on blast, you know. And we just connected. And I found that she was somebody I could be real with. She wouldn't judge me. And she had become a successful entrepreneur. So I kind of knew where she started her business. So I had her. Then Osai Alile, she picked me. I don't think I picked her. Oh, really? Yeah, because... She, she knew me then. I used to, I mean, I still do. Chude and Debola of the Future Projects and the Future Awards are like my brothers. And then I was always around them. And she, she was like, she's a mentor to them. Right. And so we would generally do things. And then I won Actor of the Year at the Future mm -hmm. Awards in 2010. I started attending lots of all these leadership things. And when the World Economic Forum was going to start something called the Global Shapers, okay. she was, she's a young global leader. And they pick these people in countries to select young people to start up stuff. So she nominated me. And I'm just like, this woman thinks I'm going to be great. That's why she nominated me. So I just took to her and I found out that when it came to leadership and being an influential woman, not just a female actor mm -hmm. that is pretty in front of the mm -hmm. camera. I knew early that being an actor is great. Being an influencer is better. Yeah. Being a captain of industry is best. You know, so I would talk to her and then I knew about Wimbis through her. And I remember my first Wimbis conference. So she would send me, she like, I think you should come. The first Wimbis conference, I think she paid, she would tell me about early bird. She paid half for me. Okay. I paid my half myself. Or she paid for me. Like, no, she paid all of it for me. The first time I went to Wimbis. And, oh my God, my life changed after that conference. Oh, yes. You know when? I mean, you can't go to Wimbis. <laughs> do you understand? And this was like when, 2010, you know? 
was like, see these women. These are things that you dream about. They are real. They are here. They, they are stories I can touch, you know? And then Wimbis had a mentorship program. So I picked a Wimbis mentorship form. And at Wimbis, they make you pay. Mm -hmm. I paid. And then I signed up for the Wimbis mentorship. And that was how Bolanio Sopisas became my mentor okay. because she was assigned to me from Wimbis. So what Wimbis does is they take you through this process. They train you on how to be a mentee. They train you that mentorship is not begging. Your mentor is not your tickets, your meal ticket. You know, you respect your mentor. You take you and you sign an undertaking that if you breach any of these things, this is what will happen. And then they will tell you to suggest people you think you want to mentor. You may be in your industry, okay. but then they, they reserve the rights to give you whoever and you better work with them. So, um, yeah, I was, I, was, I was assigned to Bonali Austin Peters. And yeah, oh. and, and, that, and for the other women, okay. there's Biola Alabi. Yeah. And there's Jumaki Adenowo. For Biola Labi, I met her at the World Economic Forum in Addis Ababa in 2012. Okay. And then Ebuka Chendo and I are global shapers. So we went together. And Ebuka, I, I'm, you see, I don't joke about my relationships, though, because they've been very instrumental. Ebuka took my hand and said, ah, he knew Biola Labi already. Okay. And said, Lala is somebody you should know. Da -da 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 -da. And, you know, I was even looking at him like, guy, you are really doing this market thing. You know, and we exchanged details. Okay. When you go for a conference and you take people's cards, you better follow up with them. Mm. So I followed up and then I was then I was getting ready for my first production as a you know independent producer in 2013, the V monologues, and I was confused. Like the budget. What was I going to do? So, you know, I just went, I asked for a meeting with her. I went okay. to her okay. and she, she gave me audience and she was the first person to give me money for the play. So she wrote me a check of about two hundred thousand naira and said, Go and start. And then she she boosted, is that correct English? My confidence, because I wanted to work with Taiwa Jaila, I said all these women, and they were giving me fees, and she told me, no, you will go back to them, you will tell them what your budget is, and you will get all of them in. So yes, and for SJ, that's Jumaki Adinawa, she's been, she's like this, my spiritual mentor okay. in things, you know, SJ will call it a prayer meeting, I pray now, and all of that, and from Unilag, you know, she used to do something called Awesome Treasures, okay, yes. and then the ministry part, so and SJ is also a woman who is a Christian woman and is successful as a businesswoman. I also think volunteering is very good. I mean, I volunteer on different um, platforms and places. Um, one of two of which are the Africa International Film Festival, AFRIF, and the Light Camera Festival. Because I'm like, okay, what other platforms help filmmakers grow? Okay. Where do the influencers come to? They come to film festivals. That's where they decide what's going on. And as an actor, you're at the bottom of the chain. It's the directors and producers. Okay that they are the ones <laughs> at the film festivals so i'm like i can volunteer here and i've been working on these film festivals for i mean for light camera africa i've been working on that festival for four to five years now so much so that i feel like i partly own the festival for afri i've actively worked on afri for about a year and it's amazing i get to meet the filmmakers they liaise with me before they come they feel like we're friends meanwhile they come when they arrive actors are trying to get their attention meanwhile they are my friend volunteer Oh. <laughs> <laughs>you say is the best way to walk or network in a room full of strangers because I mean I also go for loads of conferences yes and I find people who should know better mm -hmm. just maybe throw just throw questions that you rub you off the wrong way how would you say is the best way to actually get to network in a room full of strangers I don't know that there is a best way but people say that I know how to network so maybe I know <laughs> but um, in a room full of strangers First thing is to keep respect people's space. First of all, you don't want to look like a pest. You don't want them to think you're freaky. You know, you have to respect people's space. Make sure that you're looking really beautiful, really nice. Make sure that you're smelling great. You must be, you know, you look from head to toe, you must be great. You know, you must smell nice. There must be something about you. Now, not everybody wants to have a conversation, oh, your beads are nice. Not everybody wants to have that, even though that's great. So if we're having tea and coffee, we can talk about the tea. We can, oh, what do you do? And then, and sometimes you can tell when somebody doesn't want to have a long conversation. Mm -hmm. End it. Don't push it. And then you'll be like, oh, do you have a card? And then if the person says yes, great. If they say no, would you like to take, don't force it on them. And then you can follow up afterwards if they respond to you, great. If they don't, so you are just going to have to try because you cannot predict how the conversations will go. Some people, you start talking to them, you think it's going to be a minute and you're talking to them for 15 minutes. Yes. 
So you have to just keep trying. You cannot be discouraged. You have to always smile. You have to just, it's like, it's work. That's the thing. You prepare for it. It's not fluke. It's not toasting. It has to be strategic. You must. It has yeah. to be strategic. But one easy way to go is an hour. Because I have a few friends as well who mm. are not very conversational. So I would yes. say the first thing to do, look, is this your first time here? Exactly. Oh, it's my first time here. Oh, really? How do you hear about the event? Like, it's sometimes it's not that difficult. Just it's look not. for something in the environment. Exactly. So that we can, it. yeah. Yes. You know, because people like know that, well, I can't do it. I'm like, you can't do what it's so simple, but I've learned not to take things for granted as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm a bit, <laughs> I'm a teacher, so I don't have time for rubbish. So many people will say things like, oh, I'm an introvert. I'm shy. I'm like, Excuse if I had a one millionaire, one million dollars in front of you, would you tell me that you're shy? If I said, have a conversation with this person and you get this check, you're going to throw your shyness out of the window and you're going to give it your best shot. So have that at the back of your mind. Every day, yes, you are a shy person, but you are going to give it your best shot. Definitely, you're not going to have the conversation the way an extrovert will have it. But to the best of your own abilities, you can. You cannot just throw up your hands and say, I'm shy. I don't know how to talk. That, that, that's, that, that's an excuse, and it's not allowed in my books. I agree. And then, I mean, it's 2016. <laughs> Hello. Practice with your webcam. Practice in front of your mirror. Google it. Something. If the man of their dreams will talk to them now, <laughs> they will answer. <laughs> I agree, so there's no excuses. There's no excuses. No, I don't, no, there's no excuses. In life, there's no, there's no such thing as it can't be done. If, have you tried A to Z? You know, there's no no, there's nothing like impossible. You have to try, 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 try. Okay, so let's just talk about relationships a little bit. Okay. <laughs> right. um, what's your take on uh, a man and woman having very close relationships as best friends? Um, <laughs> that's a trick question. Personally, I don't have a problem with it. But their dynamics and their, you know, different things to these relationships. So there are questions like, how long have these members of the opposite sex been friends? When did they meet each other? At what point? You know, the phase of life. So at this stage of my life, I don't think I can meet a guy now that is not going to be my husband and be best friends with them okay. at this stage of my life. So is it somebody you grew up with? Is it somebody you went to school with? And you know, have you guys clearly defined the lines of the relationship? I think it's great, but you know why Africa is because abroad, people have all kinds of relationships and nobody questions anything. But the society is, you know, nitpicking, looking for trouble where there isn't. So I mean personally I'm fine with it, but to each his own. Mm -hmm. To each his own. So let everybody do what makes them happy. And, well, so far they don't also hurt the people around them. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for your you time. You are now. welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. <sighs> uh, <laughs> sweetheart, you're the best. Did we take a picture? Yeah, please. I think we should. Okay, thank we can just so take a sitting.